Hello everyone, by popular request, I am making a video on how we make the custom wheels for Copperhead. This isn't gonna be an exhaustive tutorial on everything you need to know about making your own custom molded wheels, but I will show you some tips and tricks and all the things we learned along the way for making the big old wheels for Copperhead. So I'm gonna start out by showing you kind of the construction of the wheels, showing you the hub, then I'm gonna move on to actually showing you the mold, and then we'll finish up with showing the actual mold process. So let's get started. So I do already have a whole video devoted on the wheels themselves on my channel. So I'm not gonna go into that many details, but for the sake of this video, let's just talk about some of the basics. This is one of the wheels for Copperhead. It's um, 15 pounds, give or take, total, and it's made up of a polyurethane rubber outside and then this nylon hub core. So this is what's in the inside. This is what sets inside that mold. We pour the rubber around it, pop it out, and there you have your wheel. And so this is what it looks like when it is finished. So the vast majority of this is actually the polyurethane rubber. It uses quite a bit. We'll kind of get into durability and stuff like that later. But basically this runs on a dead shaft. So you have a needle bearing that goes in here, a needle bearing that goes in this other side. So pocket here, pocket there, and then the whole thing just rotates on the dead shaft. And then this is the space for the sprocket that gets bolted onto it. So pretty simple stuff. So let's um, take a look at this hub. So here is a closer look at the actual hub. This was machined out of nylon. Um, I believe this was turned. Um, you could also make this just on a three axis CNC machine with a couple different operations. But yeah, that's really all there is to it. Um, we did outsource this. Nylon's relatively easy to machine. So we have the mounting holes for the sprocket. We have an undercut here, an undercut there, and then obviously the pockets for the bearings right there and there. So yeah, not a whole lot to talk about, but I said we talk about it, so we're talking about it. I think the biggest thing to note is we don't have a lot of features to hold the rubber in place. The rubber does a pretty good job of sticking to this as is. The biggest thing that we do is we go over this with um, 80 or 120 grit sandpaper and really, really, really rough up this surface to where it is, you know, kind of almost fuzzy. I mean, it's really roughed up and this, this one is not roughed up, but going over it with the sandpaper really helps with the adhesion to the rubber. So here is a closer look at the mold. As you can tell, this is a four part mold. One, two, three, four. So these four pieces fit together and form the cavity in which we can pour the wheel around. Um, they have some features down here that lock into the hub, blah, 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 blah. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna be watching this video trying to think of how they could leverage 3D printing to mold their own wheels. And this is kind of the first part that I have a little bit of um, hesitation with. The hub itself will have no issue being 3D printed, especially on the smaller weight classes. I don't know if I would trust this as a 3D print for like a heavy weight or something, but definitely on a smaller robot, you can get away with 3D printing that. The mold itself though, might be a little bit trickier and I'll just kind of explain why. These surfaces all need to fit together very nicely or else you're just gonna get a ton of um, flashing and flashing is um, this, uh, this stuff. It's, you know, the stuff that kind of seeps out between the um, parts of the mold. And even with a nicely machined aluminum mold, you're still going to get a little bit of that. So for the 3D print, you might want to go to a two-part mold, which could have a lot of challenges, or maybe you just break the mold apart. Um, that really isn't the scope of this video, but I think you could probably accomplish this in 3D printing, but it's just going to be a little bit trickier. We used a four-part mold because it's kind of the best way to do it. So let me show you how this thing fits together. Um, this is going to be the bottom section of the wheel. So if we look at the wheel, this is going to be the face that sits down like that. And you can see we have this little protrusion right there. This keys into the large opening on the wheel. So that kind of goes in like that. We'll give a little tappy tappy. and that locks it in place. It probably could use a couple more taps, but just to give you the idea. So that is now flush with the bottom surface. And we do see a little bit of um, you know, extra flashing here on the outside. It's really not that big of a deal and you can see it kind of doesn't really even come off terribly easy. So that is the bottom section. And then we have these four little divots in the corners, which line up with um, little ball bearings. Those go inside there. 
and this just makes it so that the mold keys in nicely. So these two halves will key into the right spot. So let's move that one over there. And so then this goes on top and it kind of locks into the hub there. And then this other side drops in like that. And then we have this nice little fortress that we can fill up with goo and then we undo this and we get a wheel out of it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, let's actually look at molding one of these things. Here is the actual polyurethane rubber that we ended up using for the wheels on Copperhead. Now, I'm not going to sit there and analyze the difference and the pros and cons between all the different things out there because I don't know. This is the one that we used and this is the one that worked out well for us. Um, you will maybe want a different durometer rating. Uh, the durometer rating is basically how um, squishy the wheel is, how firm it is. And you're always going to be riding this line of durability versus traction. A lower durometer wheel is generally speaking going to have better traction, but it's going to have less durability. A higher durometer wheel, like if you go up in the 80 range, let's say, is going to be extremely durable, but it's not going to have as much bounce and it's not going to have as much traction. We ended up at a, um, what, what does this say, a 50 and a 60. We actually have some wheels that are 50, some wheels that are 60. No real good reason behind that. We even have a couple wheels that are half and half, so they're probably around 45. Um, that's kind of the range that ended up really good for us. For a heavyweight, I would probably say if you're doing a really big old wheel like Copperhead, somewhere in this range is good. If you're going with a much smaller wheel, I don't know, you could go a little bit squishier, you could go a little bit firmer. It really depends on what your design is and what you are after. Um, the biggest thing to know about these polyurethane rubbers is you need to mix them really, really well. Uh, mix them according to the manufacturer specifications. These particular ones are a one-to-one -one ratio by weight. So you basically just mix them together and that's about it. Um, in terms of mixing them, we use kind of like a paint paddle, you know, like um, what you would use to mix up paint. Really, really thoroughly mix them. You only get one shot at this. And if you have um, pockets that aren't thoroughly mixed, it's not going to cure properly and you're going to have a bad time. So just make sure that you mix these properly. Last thing about the um, polyurethane rubber itself is coloring. Um, we obviously have these beautiful black wheels. You can add pretty much any coloring you want to it. Go to the manufacturer's webpage um, for any of the polyurethanes that you're selecting and you will see different coloring options. Uh, we just added a ton of black into this. We could have easily made this red or green or whatever else, uh, but you can color this polyurethane to a degree. Um, obviously, if you get too much coloring in there, it could hinder the curing, but you know we didn't really have an issue with that. So yeah, it's pretty much everything you should know about the polyurethane. For actually pouring the wheel, the first step is prep. You need to prep the surface of the mold and also prep the surface of the hub, which I mentioned earlier. For prepping the mold specifically, we're just cleaning everything with isopropyl alcohol just to kind of get all the fingerprints, get all the grease off of it, which is kind of intuitive because we're going to grease it later, but yeah, you get the point. So you just want to make sure that every single surface is nice and clean and doesn't have all your, you know, grubby fingerprints and stuff like that on it. So just go over it with some isopropyl alcohol. After we got that done, we actually just used axle grease, just kind of any bearing grease. Um, you could probably use just about anything here, just something to kind of slippery up the surface a little bit. We just um, wiped a little bit on by hand, got it nice and even, and then just kind of uh, loosely wiped it off. You just want to make sure that that surface is a little bit slippery. You could use a mold release. There's all sorts of options here, but we had the um, grease on hand and that worked out just fine. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, any of the surfaces that you want the polyurethane to adhere to, you just want to rough up with some sandpaper. It really doesn't matter. 80 grit's fine, um, 120 grit's fine, but basically you just want to get that surface nice and roughed up so that the polyurethane can properly adhere to it. So the pouring process itself is really very simple. You're just pouring liquid into a hole. I think everyone kind of knows how to do that. Um, so I'm not really gonna show a whole lot of that. Um, but in terms of getting the epoxy prepped, you wanna make sure that as many bubbles as possible are outside of it. Um, if you ever have any experience pouring epoxy or polyurethane, stuff like that, you wanna kinda just let it settle for a minute after mixing it. Let some of the air bubbles come to the top, you know, stomp it on the concrete floor, do whatever you gotta do to kinda get those bubbles out of it. We found that trying to debubble it once it's in the mold 
is kind of just a pointless endeavor. Um, it's really hard to add a significant amount of vibration to get those bubbles to come up to the surface. And they're gonna come up to the surface of the wheel, which is already inside the cavity. So you wanna get those bubbles out of the urethane before you actually pour it into the mold. So do that inside the bucket before you do the pour. Now in this video, what you're seeing is we actually poured half of it, then we poured the other half. The only reason we did that is just uh, mixing the batches. We mixed them in two smaller batches. This was really unnecessary. For the other wheels that we ended up doing, we just did everything in one batch. But keep in mind, this is 15 pounds worth of polyurethane per wheel. So there's just a big amount of it. And I don't know, maybe we had a small bucket, something like that. But you can easily pour the pour the wheel all in one go, that is not a problem. I'm skipping a little bit ahead, but here is what the top of the wheel looks like just to kind of give you an idea. You can see that there's a lot of kind of surface bubbles on here, and you can see there's a couple little voids. There's one there. There's a you know, relatively good sized one right there. None of this really matters too much because the drive sprocket actually sits on top of this, and all of this is covered. This is largely just cosmetic anyway, but just something to keep in mind when you're pouring the wheel. You're going to be pouring up to this surface, and it's gonna be pretty tricky to get this surface perfect. I mean, I guess you could vibrate it, I guess you could do some other things, but stuff like this is just bound to happen because as it cures, it's gonna settle and move around a little bit. So just keep that in mind. And if you look right here and right here, you can see that these are the um, gates or the vents that we were pouring down into. And we literally just took a knife and just kind of cut these off. It's really not a big deal. So that's what the surface looks like. And when you're doing your mold design, just keep some of this in mind. You're gonna have little air bubbles and pockets unless you really do a lot of work with the mold but we didn't so yeah that's what it's gonna look like we added the mold release features on the final wheel but all of the other wheels we basically just had to pry the mold apart when it was done and um, really good idea to add some kind of features on it to where you can break apart the mold it's not so much that the polyurethane sticks to the interior of the mold because we did have some mold release on there but it's more just kind of a suction thing. You know, you just have a pretty good solid surface mating with another solid surface. And once you kind of break that suction and break that um, surface tension almost, then it does come apart. But in the original version of this mold, you really kind of had to chisel it apart. We had to basically go into every seam, pry a um, crowbar or a chisel in there, and then just kind of pry the whole thing apart. And it was, it was a bit of a pain to get a wheel out. Um, I think we let each one sit about a week. That is a little bit longer than you need to. I think 24, 48 hours is just fine. We just let them set in a week because we'd mold them one weekend, unmold them the next and kind of repeat that process. So yeah, letting it suffer about a week, it definitely kind of grabs on a little bit. So when you're designing the mold, just think about these features and think about what you would do to actually get the mold apart because it definitely will stick on there pretty good. So I think the last thing I want to talk about is the actual durability of this rubber. And this really isn't a selling point for this specific rubber. It just kind of gives you an idea of what a polyurethane rubber wheel can end up being. Um, this is the stuff that was left over in the bottom of the bucket. And I don't know, maybe it's about a half an inch thick, something like that. And I mean, this stuff is just insanely durable. There is no way I could rip this by hand. And I think even if you got some scissors into it, it would be really, really difficult to do anything to. It's um, significantly sturdier than you think it would be. And this is the wheel that we actually used in the fight against Scorpios. And you can see the damage into this, but structurally speaking, it really doesn't matter. I mean, this wheel is still perfectly fine. This took a lot of direct hits. And yeah, you know, it took out some chunks and I think we might have even cracked um, a little piece of the core, but you know, the wheel still does what a wheel should do. And this took a lot of damage and it's totally fine. And just to give you kind of an idea of durability, I'm gonna just wail on this thing. I'll give you an idea. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm using all of my force and I cannot pierce or really do anything to this surface. Now granted heavy weights is, you know, a little bit more than just a screwdriver, but this is very durable stuff. Think about this in a one or a three pound or, you know, even a 30 pound robot. This is what it does when a heavy weight hits it. 
that's about it. So it's extremely durable stuff. It's a lot um, just kind of more rubbery than you might think it is. Um, I'm used to Bainbot wheels or some other wheels and you think you can kind of like, you know, pick it off. This, this stuff is really solid and we're pretty impressed with um, the durability of these. And we did go the entire season five on only one set of wheels. So two wheels for the entire season and they lasted just fine. So really nice and durable. So there you go. That is how we make the wheels for Copperhead. And that is pretty much everything I know about wheel making. Uh, the only last thing worth mentioning and discussing here is, um, is this worth doing? I think in many cases it is not worth doing. For something like Copperhead, there just isn't another substitute out there. And could you imagine Copperhead with just, you know, some thin little, you know, big Colson wheel? No, it just doesn't really work like that. This is a design feature of Copperhead and there's really no good substitute for it. But generally speaking, if you have a bot where a Colson or a Bainbot's wheel or some other wheel is going to work just fine, it's just a drop in there's going to be very little benefit to you making your own custom wheel. The custom wheel is going to be better. It's probably going to be more durable. You're probably going to get better traction and you can obviously design it exactly the way you want, but it is going to be significantly more expensive. There's going to be a significant time investment in there and you might not get it right the first time. You know, maybe the polyurethane didn't set well, or maybe the hub didn't adhere properly and you might have to go through a couple iterations to get it right. So the amount of time and money invested in it's gonna be significantly more expensive than just buying a wheel off the shelf, but you're probably gonna get a better product. So I would only recommend doing this if you have a design that really warrants it. Um, I have had issues with Bainbot wheels in the past and I might end up looking on making a custom wheel that works with crippling depression, something like that. But generally speaking, what I have works well enough. So it's just something to consider. It is a very costly endeavor. This polyurethane is definitely not cheap. I wanna say that each one of these wheels is about $100 or more worth of just polyurethane. So all of this adds up. But if you have a design that warrants a custom wheel, this is how you do it. All right, everyone, that's all I have for this video. Um, I'll have links down below for the company for this. I'll have links to my other wheel video. Check out all the other Copperhead videos as well. Check me out on Facebook for any updates to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.